Since the Next% Percent version 1, many other super shoes haven't even been able to come close to matching its performance over the longer distances until now. What is up guys, Andy Forrest Team Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And this is a comparison between the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and is it better or at least matching up to the Next% Percent version 1. So welcome back to another shoe comparison video. And let's be honest, over the space of a couple of years, Nike really pushed the boundaries. When it came to super shoes, when the version one next percent came out, and then of course version one Alpha Fly, these were really cutting edge at the time. And many other super shoes have come out from different brands and companies that have tried to compete and been as effective and efficient over the longer distance as these beauties. And if I'm honest, in my personal opinion, not many of them came close until now. This is a story of a comparison between the Pro and the Next% Percent version one, and really kind of the Alpha Fly. These guys were the innovators. This one is chasing the pack. And is it catching up? Let's dive in and talk about it. If you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and we kickstart with this thing. Now, of course, this shoe is extremely outdated. Now, obviously, you really struggle to pick up a pair of these. I managed to get some in the Nike sale over Christmas, and of course, innovation has come on leaps and bounds. But this is in a comparison video because I still feel personally this is the best carbon plated racing shoe of all time conjoined um conjoined joint with the alpha fly version one these two shoes were absolutely incredible and let's be honest with you the four percent was the one that kick-started it or when the four percent came out it revolutionized super shoes or the shoe market it really put a rocket up company's backsides to start pushing the envelope that's what nike did they produced that shoe and it just set the world on fire for good reasons and bad. And of course this came out and then this came out and Nike were absolutely dominating. No companies at the time were coming close to producing anything similar to these. And of course now we've had future innovations, as I've said, shoes getting close, but for me personally, not quite there. And this still is the GOAT. This still is the greatest of all time. Combined with this, I love both of these shoes, mainly for the midsole foam. The midsole foam and the plate combination in this, because this would not be the shoe it is without the plate or the midsole foam. It's the combination of the two that do the trick. Similarly in here, the midsole foam, oh, there's more of it. It's absolutely incredible. Zoom X like this is insane. For me, they took a backward step in version two. It became a little bit more plasticky. They kind of dampened it down a bit. Not sure what they did exactly, but definitely I think what they did is they realized they, they literally produced their best 10 out of 10 running shoe and yet have had to dial it back so that in the future they can re-release this type of foam and go, oh my goodness, we've got this incredible new compound of ZoomX and actually it's just this reinvented and re-put out there is what I think is gonna happen. And I've gotta be honest with you, this is absolutely incredible. As I said, the midsole foam, uh, the plate combination, I've not run in anything better. And I've tried so many other super shoes that just haven't come close. That combined, with the upper, dare I say it, a lot of people disagree with me on this. I love the Vaporweave upper. I do have a wider foot. My feet do fit snugly into here, but I love the way that this doesn't stretch and I love the way that it holds my foot strong and I love the way that how secure I feel in the shoe. The upper in version two is a bit more forgiving and it's still great, but I love the way that it's tight and locked down in here. Everything I want from a racing shoe, not on a daily basis, you wouldn't want that feeling, but on race day, you wanna feel nice and dialed in. And that's exactly what I get from this shoe. So I've got an upper that really works for me. I've got the midsole foam and the, the plate in here, which is just a deadly combination for a shoe that literally, for me, is just the best. And then along comes the Endorphin Pro 3. And what an update from Saucony it is. So let me just explain why I feel this is the closest shoe to the next percent that you and I are gonna find out there. And of course, there are plenty of other great super shoes. Do not get me wrong super shoes that are fantastic but so many of us out there that were hooked on the version one next percent haven't quite found that missing piece to the puzzle and for me this is that missing piece to the puzzle let me explain version one and two of this was a lot firmer i loved 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 running in that shoe i actually preferred for a period of time running in the pro one to the next percent version one because I found it more like an old school racing flat. Despite the stack height and stuff, what you get with this Saucony Endorphin Pros, one, two, and three, is that, I say speed roll technology. It's the geometry of the shoe, the way you land and roll through and pop off. So with the next percent version ones, 
you basically, as you're running, you kind of sync and bounce, sync and bounce. And that kind of is that combination of the Zoom X and the carbon plate working together to give you that fantastic propulsion sensation. With this, with the version one and two, you used to get a very nice kind of roll through and snap and pop off because it was a firmer foam. With this now, you still get that lovely roll through and snap off but you also get a little bit of that sink and bounce because what they've done with this foam is they made it so much more softer and so much more responsive. Suddenly, this foam feels a heck of a lot more like Zoom X. Now, not necessarily exactly the same, but I feel like what this has done is taken a shoe that was kind of trying to be close to the next percent with their own identity stamp, of course, and suddenly is a heck of a lot more efficient like the Next Percent. I've done plenty of tests and races in this shoe now, and I almost find myself exactly the same efficient-wise heart rates and cadence and stuff like that as I do in the Next Percent. Now, I've got to be honest with you, the Next Percent still is a smidge better in terms of efficiency and stuff, but this is the closest I've found to that sensation and efficiency that I get, and in terms of the midsole foam, hence why I showcase the Alpha Fly, because I love the Zoom X in both those shoes, this suddenly now feels as close to that as you can get. Obviously, it still has its unique properties, but I do feel now, as a package, this shoe is a heck of a lot better. The main difference to me is the upper. I'd say in terms of the upper, it's a little bit more forgiving than that vapor weave. And so therefore I'd say the upper is a bit more comparable to version two perhaps, but the lockdown I get on this shoe is still nice and secure. The fit is nice and secure because they use the form fit upper, which is basically where they design an upper that hugs nicely around the top of your foot. Now with that combined with the carbon plate and the softer midsole with the speed roll tech, suddenly you've got an absolute weapon on your hands. And I think basically now I get a lot of questions on social media, whether it's Instagram or on here, where I get comments about, I've got the version one, but obviously I can't get another pair. What would you recommend? Uh, and I've got to say, this thing is now coming at top of my list. It has been for a while and I'm still using it now. Now I've got over 175 miles in this shoe. It really is standard the test of time and I think that's what a lot of people found with this shoe is once you were done racing with it you can continue training in it for a very very long time it still feels really good I've got a version one pair of these over 200 miles that I would still take out and still train in them to this day and you can still do that with this I wouldn't actually race in these now because I do feel like just like the next percent they've just started to lose a little bit of pop but they're still so cushioned and so good for those training miles. And actually they're, bec they're becoming a little bit of a go-to shoe for my workouts. And I think there's one thing to note here when you're pitting these two against each other, I will say this version one still just cuts it above here. And let's also point out the fact that this is version one of a shoe and this is version three. So Saucony have taken a few goes to try and get close. I'm not saying they're trying to match up with this. They are trying to have their own unique identity, but in terms of efficiency and performance, they have taken a little bit longer to get to where Nike are. But let's be honest, this is now extremely hard to come by. You can still get it if you're lucky at outlet stores and you can buy it on select places online. But this will soon become a thing of a past. And if you are looking for a replacement for this shoe, then I've got to say, look no further than the Pro 3. Obviously, the difference now between the Pro 3 and the Speed 3 compared to like Pro 3, uh, Pro 1 and Speed 1 in previous versions is, is massive now. So uh, Speed 1 and Pro 1, they were very, very similar. Uh, but now what I feel with the two shoes in the future versions, is that this now stands out much better than the Speed 3 for racing. And that's great because it's a lot more like the Zoom Fly and Vaporfly partnership. So I feel now suddenly we have a great tag team in the Speed 3 and Pro 3 as we did with the original Zoom Fly and the Next Percent version one. So let's wrap this up by saying, I've got to say, this is an absolutely incredible replacement for this. I can't recommend it highly enough. And I know you can still get this, <coughs> excuse me, on discount for in and around 120 25 pounds on certain websites with discount codes. So this is well, well worth the money if you're looking for a replacement for this. And as always, I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Have you run in the version one next percent and then got the Pro 3? What are your thoughts and feelings? Do you feel they're quite similar or do you think I'm way off the mark? What's your closest matchup in Super Shoe you find to the next percent version one? I know what a lot of you guys are gonna say and that is the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus, I think it is, or the Edge Plus, one of the two, because I can't test those shoes. I'd love to, but they're in a size, uh, they don't go up to my UK size 13, sadly they stop at a 12, but I know 
a lot of you guys have migrated from the Vaporflies to those and you absolutely love them. But I'd love to hear if you have tried the Pro 3 from Saucony, if you feel they match up or if not. And of course, final bonus question, are you looking forward to the Vaporfly version 3? The pictures look good, but will it perform? Let's be honest, it might be another dud update or it might be really, really good. Let's keep our fingers crossed for a good one, but let's not hold our breath, especially after the version 2 update. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.